course, of course. Okay. What the heck is happening in California? Well, this is kind of an update. Just, I don't know where you guys are. Where are you living and what's happening in your area? And of course, there's an old saying that a recession is when your neighbor, how am I gonna do a video with this? A recession is when your neighbor is out of work. A depression is when you're out of work. Hold that thought. Okay, I'm back. So, what is happening in California? Well, as of now, we have done, at first they said, okay, three week lockdown. And then they, then the, the stats, and you know what stats I'm talking about, and I don't want to get in trouble by saying why the stats are what they are, but you know what they are. The stats actually with the lockdown went up. More people were dying, more cases, so they did, well, instead of saying, well, that didn't work, they just did another three weeks of lockdown. And so a lot of businesses have been unable to do their business in California. And we have not been shut down, but the effect is that if a patient has lost their job, they're not getting paid, uh, they're not gonna come in. So, you know, it affects us even though we're not officially locked down or uh, not working. A lot of nail salons, a lot of hair places uh, basically have tarps in their window and says they're closed. But it seems like everyone's getting their hair color done, their nails done, and, and their hair cut. So people are doing what it takes to stay in business. Uh, and so it's, it's the end of six weeks. Uh, I have a number of patients who have owned businesses that are now simply bankrupt. So that's what the heck is going on. Uh, you can't go out to eat. You can't go eat. Now today, uh, this week, we had, and you're gonna laugh because it's a big deal in California, but it's really nothing compared to other places is we had 45, 47 mile per hour winds on Tuesdays. So naturally we have uh, power shut off. Um, the entire Simi Valley, which is a place where I have a lot of patients, uh, their power is down, was down for a couple days. And so that's all we need. And I don't know what to tell you. I mean, this is, it's kind of like, you know, that saying where that if you keep repeating the same thing and expecting a different result, that's the definition of insanity. So we just keep wearing stuff. We just keep locking down. We just keep uh, hiding. And the more we do these things, seems like it's getting worse. And it almost feels as a business owner, it almost feels like we're being treated as children. Oh, on top of that, uh, as of January 1st, we're enforced by the, by the state of California to pay our employees more, you know, they, the, so if I hire someone just for minimum wage, just to do some filing, you know, a high school kid, somehow or another, I'm supposed to supply that high school kid with a whole living wage thing. Uh, that's controversial, of course, and some people will say, no, you should pay a living wage. But to do just part-time, just to file stuff, it's, it's getting expensive. And then also, and I like, I really like my um, management company that manages my building. I think they're very nice people, and I appreciate them. And I understand where they're coming from. But you know, rent went up this year. So my malpractice goes up my rent goes up, my, my payroll goes up, taxes went up in California, but then business is dying, you know? And I'm fortunate because I'm an eternal optimist, so I try to be. <laughs> uh, that's why I have that puppet. But I try to be an internal optimist and also I'm not a spendthrift, 
So I don't have a big mortgage. I don't have big expensive cars. I don't have big expensive bikes. You know, some people I know have ten, twelve thousand dollar bikes, and I don't have that. So I just have very moderate uh, costs of bikes. I have my bicycles paid off. I mean, some people are making payments on bicycles. Can you believe that? The answer is yes. In California, uh, it's expensive here. So the state of California, and a lot of people are leaving. Um, yet you hear that and you see it, but then a home down the street is sold for half a million dollars and it's a two bedroom condo. And you think to yourself, how are people, how are people going to pay this mortgage in a time like this? I personally would not buy a brand new home uh, right now unless I was secure in my job. And, th and there, I do have a lot of patients, fortunately, who are working from home. They've always been working from home. Uh, their jobs are such that it's not dependent upon actually being at a facility. So they're, they're in good spirits. They're in good luck. They're getting paid the same amount that they were before this, this situation in the world. So I don't know where I wanted to go with this. I just thought it would be interesting to find out how other people are dealing with this. My personal method of dealing with this is I am not a history buff, but I do understand history. And I understand that the pendulum swings both ways. I'm from the generation that read the book 1984 by George Orwell. And so I'm not a conspiracy person, but I do see the writing on the wall. And I trust but I question and I wonder, but I'm not a nut job, you know. And I try to see the positive in everything because ultimately we're gonna get older and we're gonna look back on these times and realize that, wow, we either screwed up or did everything right. And I lived through 9-11, I lived through the AIDS epidemic, I lived through a time when everybody was afraid of sexually transmitted diseases. When my children were born, everybody was afraid of SIDS. Um, you thought you were going to bring your home baby, put him in the crib, and they were just going to sudden, suddenly die for no apparent reason. And there was big fear about that. There was the anthrax, the H1N1, the swine flu, this uh, flesh-eating bacteria. It seems as though every year or so, there's just something to be afraid of. And I've kind of gotten to the age where I'm, I hate to say it, I'm just not afraid anymore because I feel like you can tell me I should be afraid, but I know that whatever is happening right now is probably going to pass. And next year, you're going to try to make me even more afraid. And the next year, and the next year. How many years have we been told between the months of October in February that, ah, oh, this is the worst season it's going to be. This is the worst, you know? And it never is. It never is. Now, this is bad. It's bad. And I get the reports every day from the county in my, in my area, Ventura County, and we see exactly who's passing, how many people are passing, what their ages are, and I, uh, I'm riding my bike a lot. I'm trying to stay healthy. I'm working out a lot. I have more time to stretch. I have mo focused a lot on nutrition this year. And the reason why is because the only defense that we have is we can be stronger. It's like getting hit by Mike Tyson. If you're weak, if you're old, if you have a lot of comorbidities, and you get hit by Mike Tyson, you're going down for the count. But if you're strong and you train for it, you can maybe take a couple punches from Mike Tyson before you go down. So my feeling 
on what's happening now, as of today, this Friday, is I am going to strengthen myself as strong as humanly possible. I am going to make myself a foe for whatever comes at me. I am going to take things to improve my immune system, such as fish oil, vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, and I'll put some links down below. You can get what you want. I'm an Amazon affiliate, so I'm just putting links of stuff that I get for my nutrition. Uh, I eat a very Mediterranean style of diet. I eat a very zonish type of diet if you want to classify a type of diet, but I'm into this, man. I'm going to make sure that if anything comes after me, that I am fully trained and prepared for this. And so that's my take on it. And so I choose not to live a life of fear. I choose not to live a life where my life is dictated but I, by what I see on Twitter, Instagram, whatever the, whatever the heck social media wants to try to influence my brain. I'm going to think for myself and do what I can. And I've really this year, because I have less patience actually, I have more time to actually focus and really dig into patients' problems. And it's been fun. I don't feel rushed at all in my uh, business. And I think patients are getting a better service because of that. So what's your opinion? What's going on with you guys in a uh, YouTube world? And so if you're a fan of mine, if you're a subscriber, I do appreciate this. I really appreciate the the mechanism by which we can have free speech on uh, social media and let me know what's going on in your world. So I am going to turn on the lights. It's lunchtime. I'm going to get back to work and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on Monday. Over and out.